Hello, Ginch Wimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Not a whole lot for me to do today because I'm going to let a couple of people do the talking for me. They can speak for themselves on a couple of videos. One short item I want to share and then on to the main item, which is a Maricopa County ballot audit update. But first, I want to shoot over to the Middle East for a moment. As you know, the fighting continues between the Gaza Strip and Israel, Gaza attacking Israel, Israel defending themselves. That's the situation right now. But amid all of that, there are these calls from, well, even from our own president. We have a problem where our president has a problem. Well, I guess we all have a problem with the far left of the Democratic Party who seem to be the driving force of the Democratic Party right now. So Joe Biden is under pressure from them to denounce Israel. On the other hand, there's the whole rest of the country that he has to be concerned about, which supports Israel, understands that they are under attack, they are defending themselves, understands that Hamas is deliberately putting munitions and tunnel entrances and tunnel exits and rockets and rocket launchers in civilian areas. The Israelis are doing everything they can to avoid civilian casualties, which is completely opposite to what the, the Gazans are doing. There are Hamas. They're just firing rockets indiscriminately. Only, they are only aiming to the extent of trying to hit entire cities. They don't have precision rockets. And if they did have precision missiles, there's no doubt in my mind that they would be using that capability to target civilians, not to target uh, military or not exclusively military targets. They would deliberately, well, that's what they're doing right now. They want to hit as many civilians as they can, and they also want to kill. This is uh, the really disgusting part. They want to kill as many of their own people as they can. I've already mentioned in earlier vlogs that... They have no bomb shelters. They do nothing. Well, I just told you a moment ago, they locate their military assets right within civilian areas, right next to kindergartens and hospitals, other civilian areas. But they also don't make bomb shelters. They don't make their tunnels, their terror tunnels available to the civilian population to protect themselves against Israeli bombs that would not be falling if Hamas were not firing missiles at Israel. So the, you can see the dilemma that Israel has on the one hand, trying to avoid the civilian casualties, and on the other hand, getting no credit for it, and these increasing calls for Israel to agree to a ceasefire, which they are not doing, as I'm recording this to their credit. But there seems to be this conventional, misguided, quote-unquote, wisdom that it's possible to negotiate with Hamas, that there's some way to reach a settlement, some way to create a Palestinian state, which idea the Israelis have pretty much abandoned. They see that that's not possible, even talking about the entire Palestinian Authority. Well, actually, they're separate now. The Palestinian Authority in Judea and Samaria, commonly known as the West Bank, and Gaza, which for all practical purposes is a separate state and is attacking Israel, somehow there's supposed to be some kind of potential for a settlement that Israel can negotiate some kind of settlement with Hamas that would bring peace, love, and, and you know, joy forever. Well, let's let Hamas answer that in this video. So... Here is uh, Hamas, their true face, the true face of Hamas that you don't see probably in the mainstream media. Here it is. Watch. <laughs> Fala, 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 Fala,
Welcome back. You just saw the video. You just saw the true Hamas, Hamas as they really are. And someday I'll read you their charter, which is even more, uh, well, it's just anti-Semitic. It's just Jew hatred from beginning to end. It's totally dedicated to the destruction of Israel, as you just heard in that video and saw in that video. That's all that they are about now on to the main subject for today which is a maricopa county ballot audit update as i said last week the operation is shut down right now for the week because of some high school graduation exercises that had been booked for the arena where the audit was being done so they moved the ballots off site temporarily took down all the tables at the end of the week or starting next week they will be back up again and running the cameras are still running though last time i checked not all of the cameras because there is now just an empty arena but semi trailers were visible in a in front of cameras. I assume that's where the ballots are because they are keeping a very close uh, video feed of everything that is going on so that the process, contrary to the accusations being made, so that the process is totally uh, transparent. Here is Kelly Ward though with an update regarding the continued um, stonewalling by the Maricopa County uh, election authority, uh, election officials, refusing to comply with subpoenas, with subpoenas that have been sustained by not just a court, two courts. Two courts, there have been two court cases, there is nothing, whether you think it's right or wrong, whether you think routers and ballots and data should be turned over or not, that, that issue has been settled by two courts. The Maricopa County uh, officials, election officials, they have been ordered to turn over everything that has been subpoenaed by the Arizona Senate. And as I said, they're, they're, uh, they're stonewalling. As I use the phrase in the past, I use it again now, flop sweat. Uh, you can just see the flop sweat just dripping off of them as they keep working overboard not to comply with the subpoenas. There's not an argument anymore. They have a subpoena. The subpoena has been adjudicated. It has been ruled valid by two Arizona courts. They have no excuse not to turn the information over. And even so, the Arizona Senate is trying to settle this in a civilized way. As I'm recording this, I'm recording this on Tuesday. You're seeing it on Wednesday. I'm recording it relatively early in the day, about two o'clock uh, Tennessee time where I am but it's a, two, it's a couple hours earlier in Arizona right now. There is scheduled for one o'clock 
4 o'clock Eastern time, a meeting. The Arizona Senate is holding a hearing, a meeting. They have invited the uh, officials from the uh, Maricopa County um, election officials. They, they've invited them to come and meet with them and testify and try to, well, to explain, I don't think there is an explanation, but to explain why they are refusing to turn things over and, and try to work something out. Last I read, my latest information is that the election officials are refusing even to show up, and they even sent a, a, a pretty insulting 14-page letter saying why they, they felt they should not uh, comply, which is fine. They can give any reason they want, but again, they have a valid subpoena. They are required to turn over the information, so I'm assuming that, and we'll see how it turns out. But I'm just guessing, I could be wrong, but my prediction is that this meeting will go nowhere and Arizona, the Arizona Senate is going to have to go to court again. And, and this is just gonna go on and on and on. So, because again, why not, If even if you think, no matter how fraudulent you think this, this audit is, there's no reason not to wait for it to be completed, and then you'll have a record, and then you'll have something that you could criticize. And Arizona will have something, the Arizona Senate will have uh, information and videotapes and, and files and, and images of ballots to back up their side of the story. That's my introduction. Here is Kelly Ward, the chairwoman of the Arizona Republican Party. Hello, everyone. Welcome to America's Audit Update from the Republican Party of Arizona. I am your chairwoman, Dr. Kelly Ward. At my last update, it was clear that tensions were growing as the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, together with the Maricopa County Recorder, Stephen Richer, were resisting the request um, of the Arizona Senate to meet at one o'clock tomorrow to discuss irregularities and omissions found during the audit process. The request was a simple one. Now, we found some serious problems. We need some serious answers, so let's discuss them in a constructive manner. Karen was very, Senate President Karen Pham was very professional. Well, that hit a nerve that has the Maricopa Board of Supervisors Chairman Jack Sellers and Recorder Stephen Richer launching an all-out war against the audit, uh, against the Arizona Senate, and even against former President Donald J. Trump. In a matter of days, their names are now in every news outlet in America as they do the Democrats' bidding in trying to undermine and stop the audit. Is it just a matter of Sellers and Richards objecting to the Arizona Senate's request, or is it something much deeper? Well, let's look at a little history here, because it's important. Let's be clear that the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors and their attorneys have fought from day one uh, any attempt by anyone, including me, on behalf of the Arizona Republican Party, to review, examine, test, or even question any portion of the results of the 2020 election process. Long before they started fighting the Arizona Senate, they characterized any attempt by Arizona voters to audit or hand count the ballots as fraudulent, irresponsible, and illegal. They said they've conducted their own audit and that nothing more is required. That is an outright lie. They fought hard against the Arizona Senate subpoenas requesting access to the ballots and the voting equipment. Under threat of arrest for ignoring the Senate subpoena, they asked for protection from the Arizona courts. Well, guess what? The courts sided with the Arizona Senate and its constitutional right and responsibility to review elections, the results, the processes, and everything in between. Even then, these elected officials fought back and they refused to let Arizona election offices be used for the audit that you couldn't go to the Maricopa County Tabulation Center. That resulted in the transport of ballots and equipment to the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The response from the Board of Supervisors and the people at Maricopa County, 
attack the Senate as though they were jeopardizing ballot security as they were forced to move the ballots to another secure site, which they did with heavy security. What exactly is going on here? Are these just elected officials whose primary interest is voter integrity and election transparency, or are they typical politicians who are doing everything to protect their backside while keeping the voters in the dark? No doubt here, it's the latter. Sellers and richer have shirked their responsibilities to the voters that elected them. They aren't interested in working with the Arizona State Senate in any way that is constructive. We've seen it before when good people find themselves with power entrusted to them by the voters. They forget their time in office is temporary. They forget that they serve at the pleasure of the voters. They forget that their sole responsibility is to represent their constituents. Sound familiar? They view any attempt by the voters, by we the people, or by their duly elected representatives to look into this as a sham and interference into how they run their offices. How dare anyone question their work or their motives, let alone the Arizona Senate or Arizona courts. Their job is not to attack us, but to listen to us. But they certainly are not hearing us or our concerns. And that's why this audit must continue, why it must be completed. We need answers to real questions that, for some reason, some of our elected officials are hesitant to provide, or even worse, to even entertain. That's what America's audit is all about, answers to our questions. The pace of developments is going to be moving rapidly today. And, of course, we will keep you updated as events unfold. If you want to tune in to the Board of Supervisors Dog and Pony Show today at 1 p.m. Arizona time, you can find links and info on how to do that on my social sites at Kelly Ward AZ, Kelly with an I. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, share this video and spread the word. Of course, if you can help us with a donation so that we can keep the pressure on, use the link below. I know I'll see you again soon, right here as we stand strong together to keep America great. That's it for today, except to repeat once again how honored and appreciative I am that you spend some of your time with me. If you could spend a little more time, I would really appreciate even more. A thumbs up if you like this video. Share with anybody you think would also like the video. Got any comments? Comment section below the video. You can also put there questions, suggestions for future topics. You can visit my other channels, my hot dog channel. I just put up a new hot dog recipe yesterday. So just keep watching those hot dog videos. My music channel, working on a new channel. Links to both in the description. You could subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. You could encourage other people to subscribe. But most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.